Welcome back. It is a new month for us, and that means that we have a new edition of books that you'll certainly be buzzing for. And Emily Harris with the Sulin Library is joining us now to talk about some of the reads that uh, we have in store for this month. So uh, I didn't get to do a little bit of preview of like mm -hmm. what you would talk about. So The Drowning Woman, this is all stuff that I'll get to hear for the first time. Uh, okay. Ominous or what? So all of these reads are more on the bleak side, but okay. very captivating and grossing reads. Okay. So this one is a good thriller if you like thrillers. Mm -hmm. um, if you liked Dead to Me on Netflix or The Housemaid by Frida McFadden, you'll like this one. It's about a woman who loses her home mm -hmm. because she loses her restaurant during the pandemic. So she doesn't have a place to live. She moves to Seattle and she's spending the night by the water in her car because she doesn't have anywhere else to go and she sees a woman drowning. So she jumps in and rescues her, and the woman is not happy. Mm -hmm. She wanted to drown because she's in a very abusive, toxic relationship, and she thought that was the only way out. So the two strike up a friendship, and there are a lot of twists and turns after that that keep you guessing. So it's very good. And maybe a lo loose kind of true events, but also not in it, more so fictional, but yes. loose things that we experience. So exactly, yeah, very current. Um, the Vaster Wild, this one looks like it looks pretty uh, adventurous. Yeah, part. it's about survival. Okay. So if you liked Robinson Crusoe or survival um, or historical fiction, it takes place in the 1600s. Okay. It's uh, about a girl who's running from her colony where she lives. She, uh, it just starts off with her running. You don't know why or anything, and as she runs, you learn more about her history, why she's running, why she feels safer out in the wilderness with nothing than she does back at her colony. Are you trying to mentally think of I have enough days in November to get to everything? Right. Uh, <laughs> wellness, obviously, this one has to be pretty good for us. You'd think. Maybe not so much. It, they, <laughs> th th it's a trick. Yes, it's not nonfiction. It's not about health. It's okay. more relationship and individual wellness. So it's a, it's a fiction book. It's about a young couple and how they fall in love, but then it's also about what comes after happily ever after. You usually don't get to see that part. Mm -hmm. So it's about their 20 year relationship and how they're starting to struggle in their marriage and they want to find their own way in the world while keeping their marriage strong and it's a struggle. Well, as we head to this last book, I can tell this is definitely gonna be ominous with mm -hmm. Murder Night in the yes. title. So what do you it's got for fantastic. us? fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm reading it right now. It is Gilmore Girls meets Murder, She Wrote. Okay. So. It is about a grandmother who is a big real estate person in LA, but she's very busy, hard worker, and she gets diagnosed with cancer and has to go and live with her daughter. She can't work anymore. And so, um, oh, she also moves with her granddaughter. So mm -hmm. all three generations are living together. And her granddaughter is accused of murder. She's only 15. And so her protective grandmother decides that not only is she going to prove her granddaughter's innocence, she's also going to find the real murderer. Okay, not too bad at so, all. And you're slowly working through this one yep, already. Okay, very good. perfect. Well, mm -hmm. Emily, always good to see you. Yeah. Good to get some more reads here that I still have on my queue to get to. One more check of the forecast coming up after this.